Well, here we are, right where we left off last week. Doc, Dave, and Abby waiting. Eighteen minutes has passed since we gave the injection, and now she's showing a little bit of discomfort walking around the stall and stopping here to show that she's starting to sweat. And that's the first obvious thing that you have will be the sweating. Then she'll start moving around and she'll notice how long, how much longer the vulva is now. Now she's lying down. As a rule, they'll lie down two to four times, generally three, and oftentimes they'll change side every time they lay down. She's back up now. We're still just sitting on the bed. Now she's back down again. Mares don't really go into labor until they lay out flat. There we see the amniotic vesicle <clears throat> has shown up and the two feet are right inside of it. Now she got up again. Notice both front feet are out and it's perfectly normal for the mare to get back up another time or maybe two even though there's feet and legs presented. Notice here that the amniotic sac has broken. One foot is still inside. We're waiting now for the nose to appear and there it is, right above the knees on the fold. The nose is right there. Now you know that all everything is a normal presentation. Okay, <clears throat> everything's progressing well. Normal presentation. She's getting ready to get up again. As I said, often that, well, look at there. Look how obvious the wax is on the end of the teeth. And she's in full labor when she stays out flat. She's probably getting ready to get up. No, nope. she laid down. <clears throat> out flat, now she's in labor. Just, I always make sure the membrane is clear and if you do want to pull, I just wanted to show you that you want to pull down toward the bottom, toward her feet. Don't pull straight out. Pull down toward her feet for added assist. And if you use just a little steady pressure, no jerking, let her do the work. Here we have the pole now out Chest cavity is out, thoracic portion of the body, and the rest, the back uh, third, is probably still in the vaginal vault. And we don't want to hurry that because during this time, at least a pint of milk, of blood, excuse me, a pint of blood will transfer from the maternal placenta to the foal's body, giving added immunity, added strength everything that blood can help do. So now they're resting, both of them. The mare laying out flat, resting, not laboring. <clears throat> Hips are out. Hocks and feet are still in the vaginal ball. See how she's relaxed. Now both of them are resting, and so now, here we go again. This little guy comes looking over the hind leg. And he's starting to struggle a little bit now <clears throat> to get the rest of his feet out of the vagina. And there we are. Look at there, she says. Where'd he come from? They're both enjoying each other, and here he starts to get up. Or try to get up. He's not really trying to get up. He's trying to get his hind legs out of the vagina. And he's struggling there because he wants to get more freedom and he's kind of fastened together with some of the membranes of the afterbirth. She's relaxing just a little. She's still studying him, wondering what he was. He's going to 
shake his head no. <clears throat> there comes the hawk. See, there's the hawk. He's now out of the vagina. So probably, in, the next, in most cases, about now, the mare will get up. And <clears throat> see all of the membranes are still around the hind legs? <clears throat> what Dave is doing there, he's removing some of the membranes so it won't get tangled up with the hind legs. And then he's peeking to see whether it's a filly or a colt. And now they are, <clears throat> and she's turned around, sniffing him, bonding with each other. There we are. It's time for me to go to bed. However, our photographer, Kate, stayed on a little while to watch this foal get up. Notice that he gets up hind end first. All other horses get up front end first. And he get, foals get up hind end first like a cow. In conclusion, I just want to re-emphasize <clears throat> that 15 hundredths of a dose of oxytocin 15 hundredths of a cc, and you have to use a tuberculin syringe to get that small amount. Farewell.